has been remarkable just the build up to us arriving here at the commentary box this man we need a seatbelt for him Beverly he's almost excited as I believe you were in New Zealand last week whitewater rafting and everything how did you survive I just did it was quite a sensational experience as Aussies you don't often think of New Zealand as a tourist destination but it was fabulous absolutely sensational are you uh, back for good now? Because you've been having a holiday every second week. <laughs> I'm not leaving the seat for the rest of the year. And what a great, what a great score for women! Finally, been recognised there as a goal umpire last night. Uh, what about the style of that woman? Because I didn't get to see her hairstyle though <laughs> under that cap. I think they think they could at least show us how she looked. Yeah, the cap look once removed is not a good idea. I can tell you. <laughs> but she did have, a great job, Bev. In indeed, you have a great call, fellas. All right, thanks very much, Bev. Well, Phil, I know you are excited in terms of Coburg. You coached them for nine years, a couple of premierships, 200-plus games. But you were there last Sunday when they won the first ma their first match of the season. What were they like there in that last quarter? Oh, well, the last quarter was exhilarating. It was yeah. played in pretty difficult conditions. Ground was a bit damp. They were kicking into a breeze. And they just came home with such spirit, you know. Yeah. And we had a past players there, the boys from 88. And it was just tremendous, you know. So it was a great game. It was disappointing for Port. But I think at uh, Org as well, I think they'll be very competitive here today, you know, against another young side in Box Hill. Well, the VFL moving to a top six this year, I guess it does open up an extra space in terms of the ladder. Six of the uh, 11 teams make the finals. I know Box Hill and Coburg, they're both meant to be down the bottom of the ladder, but whoever wins today have got a couple of wins on the board and they can start thinking about trying to squeeze in. Well, that's right. You know, hope springs eternal, yeah. doesn't it? With a six, it keeps you alive. You know, you can struggle during the year and maybe put it together at a certain time like Sandy put it together at the right time yeah. of the year last year. So any side thinks, well, if we get to the six, you know, hang in there, bit of a chance. So, look, a lot of these games will be like finals. It will. You it know, will. So, so we're a set great day here and on a different side of the ground today. And innovation on ABC Sport. Indeed. Let's have a look at the VFL ladder uh, up to this point of time. You can see there, Frankston, the only unbeaten team at this stage of the season. Everyone has a win, which is a great-looking ladder, Phil, isn't it? So even. Yes, it is. I mean, that Frankston side looks pretty ominous. But, yeah. gee, Werribee, you know... They did, they looked yeah, on this last they, year. Well, that's right. So, yeah, it's great to see things nice and tight. And, I, you know, in a, in a sense, I sort of like that final six. I, you know, I think you've got to earn a premiership, but six opens it up, and there you see Coburg and Box Hill. But as I said, Coburg's performance last week belied its position on the ladder. And we know, of course, Box Hill the same. Uh, they, had a, they had a big win against Port in the mm. first game, so yep. who knows? And the leading goal kickers, Danny Del Rey, with six for Williamstown last week in our feature match, moved ahead of Shane Smith of Springvale, who booted four and as you can see there Coburg Anthony Alessio in with eight goals but he's their leading goal kicker yes. at the moment and for Box Hill to this point of time no one has scored more than four goals it's been a remarkable well season. that's right but Wilkinson is a key player yeah. on their forward half as is Alessio at centre half forward or full forward for Coburg so they're two of the more brilliant high marking players in the yeah. competition oh. two to watch here's some of the scenes from the dressing rooms at the moment you see the Box Hill team warming up and what about the inexperience though Phil of the Coburg side only five of the players out there have played 20 plus games it's yes. a remarkable to think how inexperienced they are well it's a quite a turnabout you know it's a rebuilding phase as we look at the box hill side there's some well placed players there yeah. Heaney's played a lot of good footy Crowley the same O'Neill a good player Nickel the same and then you see Wilkinson up on the forward line a yellow crossed over from Preston he formerly came from Coburg Slater's a tall Douglas, so Tranquilly from yep. AFL Footy, yep. Disney. That's got a fair bit of talent in there. You'd say on paper more experience than the Coburg side, as we, the, which we see there. And the Coburg side, as you mentioned, a very inexperienced side as we see them lining up there. David Weston, he's one of the almost the veterans of the team. He's well, 22 years old. Yes, and I, look, I must say, Alan Ezard last week in the middle, the former Essendon champion, started his career at Coburg in 1983, Alan Ezard. I played with him that year and he did really well for the Lions in the centre bounces when it counted. Duncan was good and Taranto worked hard. So, any possibility? It promises to be a great game. Well, Ross Booth is on the boundary line. Ross, there was a bit of a breeze blowing during the reserves game this afternoon. What's it like at the moment? Yes, uh, nice sunny conditions as you can see, but there is a bit of a breeze, a two-goal breeze uh, from the south, the northern end of the ground to the right of the screen. And a big surprise, John Murphy's lining up with Darren Wilkinson, the captain, number seven. He's lining up on Anthony Alessio. Uh, I guess he's at full forward, but he's really going that forward pocket. So that's uh, a big one. And then Phil, all for you. Second week in a row, umpire 23, Jason Quigley. Hey, hey. Well, thanks for that, <laughs> Ross. <I'm... laughs> yes, along with Keith Callahan and Matthew Head. And we are underway. Coburg kicking to the right of screen. And that's a deep kick towards full forward. 
the flyer was gilpin up couldn't take the mark it's a very wide ground here at the box hill city oval they don't want to get trapped up in those pockets now mccabe sends that high one towards the direction of alessio he can't take it held without it to tora gets the handball away they might be able to sit something up here i think that was Izzard snapping on goal and he's just missed to the left hand side it all happened very very quickly but the center breaks always important Coburg getting the break there yes well an interesting move with Alessio being picked up by Wilkinson but that's that's a good move in a sense because Alessio is a real driver for the Coburg side and we'll have a look at that contest as it unfolds now direct kick the target there was Slater had it punched away still a chance nonetheless for the Box Hill team that kick was touched off the boot Goberg, they've started impressively even at this early stage. They force it forward. Oh, almost to Tora. Forces the contest. The hand pass comes out. Another looping chance. handle over the top. This should be the chance. Steading is Sutherland, and he puts it through for the goal. And what a start for the Coburg side in the opening minute. Two shots on goal, and John Sutherland gets his first and Coburg on the board first well I tell you what uh, haven't they looked spirited Clinton yeah. you know they've been their interceptions have been very good and their handballs been smart and very experienced stuff for a young side that was clever thoughtful handball there by the various players I think Nunciato there was a key player he held onto the ball set it up nicely and that man there Sutherland kicking a nice goal good start so, back in the centre, Slater, number 23 for Box Hill. Seemed to have first purchase on it, but we'll have a secondary bounce in the middle. It's not that cold. I think those folks have come from a warmer climate, perhaps. It's a beautiful day for football here at Box Hill City Oval from the bounce. Slater palms it down anyway. They scrambled up to centre-half forward, leaping forward. And a good diving mark is taken by Andrew Nicholl. Chance to send Box Hill deep to full forward. Coburg there in front, forcing it down was Budge. Squeezes out the back of the pack. Oh, risky handball. Tranquilly's there, well tackled. Ball up 15, 20 metres out from Coburg's goal. And of course, number 22 in the umpire division is Jason Quigley. We don't know if he's related to Mr. Quigley from Ballycus Angel. We'll check that oh. out the final well, episode tomorrow night. We'll We're talk, in suspense. We'll talk about it a little later on. It will be gripping as Box Hill have a chance. Good hand pass out though. I think by Weston of the Coburg side. Oh, almost thrown out of the back of the pack. Another possession for Ezard. It's a kick beyond the defensive 50 but Brett Harton is there. Formerly of East Perth in WA. Bounces one inside 50. The Box Hill, good tackle applied on Bello, and it's over the boundary line for a throw-in. Left forward pocket for the Mustangs. Let's have a look at the reserve score, and it was a pretty comfortable win for Box Hill. It was... Coburg kicked an early goal late in the last quarter, but Box Hill home by 46 points. From the throw-in, Coburg should be able to clear here. Hand pass over the top, Hart and bearing down on Davidson. Ball spills to Tranquilly. Hand pass doesn't find the target. Oh, gee, a couple of turnovers there. Duncan's handball was a nil-directed one. Still a chance for Box Hill, but Ezard. Yes, he just caught high. high there. I tell you what, he's been playing pretty good football, Alan Ezard. I think he's around about the 33 mark. Very experienced AFL player. Good in the clinches. Weston. A blonde Weston this year. Takes the 1-2. Uh, Good working midfielder for the Lions with the breeze. Inside 50, but stepping back is Crowley. Takes the clearing mark to this uh, halfback flank. Big wide ground here, the Box Hill City Oval. This is Wilkinson in defence and didn't do it so well. Out on the full, over the fence indeed. There he is, the captain of the Mustangs.